sorry, part two. Um, so for our uh, interventions, priorities, and whatnot, um, as a nurse, we see that an asthma attack is a, you know, it's a serious thing. It impairs the airway and reduces the patient's ability to get oxygen. So the very first uh, intervention that we should be looking at is to get, um, to assess the patient's pulse ox level um, and also take the lungs, looking for wheezing, crackling, stuff like that. Um, then we should institute therapies right away. Uh, first thing would be get them on supplemental O2. Um, and I say that's first just because, okay, if we are in an ED and we don't have uh, actual drugs on hand, the first thing that we should be able to grab is oxygen off the wall, stick it in their nose. Then priorities include um, medications. So we have, for, for our medications, we have multiple types. Um, so the first first ones we're gonna be looking at is, uh, uh, you know, the short acting beta two and, or agonists, which, uh, you know, they, they mediate the, the swelling response and dilates the bronchioles. So it opens it up, allowing more air in. Um, so like our rescue inhalers, and then um, ones that are anti-cholinergic, cholinergics. Um, basically they inhibit the um, music, musicarinic, cholinergic receptors and reduce intrinsic vagal tone. Um, then we have cortical steroids, um, which re it mediates the inflammatory response. Um, and then um, and those are going to be our priority drugs, the ones that are going to rapidly take effect. Um, the other drugs that are included in treatments for uh, um Asthma are going to be more of a, uh, you know, the long-term chronic uh, management of symptoms rather than the acute respiratory, I'm in distress kind of thing. Let's see. Uh, the next one is... Um, what would our priority teachings be? Or three important things to teach, rather, I should say. Um, number one... A lot of times, uh, these diagnoses come early, and kids aren't 100% aware exactly how to use these things, um, inhalers it is. So that should be our very first instruction. You never assume the patient understands what they're doing, especially as a child. So we need to teach them exactly how to inhale, hold, exhale, and for two iterations. Um, I've heard stories of people coming a couple inches to, you know, away from their face and spraying it, kind of like the old school banaka. Um, and obviously that is wildly ineffective. Um, other people I've heard put it in their mouth, squeeze, but they breathe in their nose, which doesn't exactly get the drug into their lungs. Um, the next one's going to be a behavior modification techniques. Uh, being able to because, like I said, um, everybody's different. They react to different allergies or triggers differently than others do. So it's going to be a exercise for the patient to learn how to identify their individual triggers and how to modify their behavior to avoid causing those triggers if possible. Um, and then number three is they need to understand what they're taking, the medications they're taking. They need to know the difference between a rescue inhaler um, they need to know a controller medication inhaler, sort of like a, um, like an Advair, a long-term, like an NSAID, and then um, and a nebulizer, which, you know, vaporizes and humidifies just air, and you can use a uh, face mask, which are pretty good for, for kids under five. Those are, you know, one of the better ones, just because um, the conscious thought of breathing in and inhaling a you know an inhaler device it might be a little difficult for you know three to five year old to be able to grasp um and so 
but, but yes, like I said, the, what the machines are and how they're delivered and why they're delivered is going to be one of the biggest ones um, that you can actually put out there. And then for the community resources available to clients, um, like I said, I, it's like Bond Police for Children, so and that's what I focused on, um, especially because, like I said, asthma it tends to affect, uh, I guess they, it would have the most pronounced effect on children. Um, just because it's so new to them, so foreign. So two of the things that I wanted, I, I, I saw was, um, one is this one called Camp Soaring Eagle. I'm focusing on, you know, Phoenix, Greater Phoenix area. One's called Camp Soaring Eagles, free asthma uh, respiratory camp for, for kids. And they um, can do all these activities like horseback riding, uh, fishing, arts and crafts, and and then the other one is, uh, gosh, where did it go? Asthma, asthma Athletics. It's a, a athletic organization, nonprofit for uh, low income families, at, you know, specifically for people with asthma, and with not just asthma but all long term diagnoses. One of the biggest. Uh, things that we can do is prepare their their psyche, their their mental, um, to understand that life with this disease is not debilitating, and and teach them how to have the the, the most of their to make the most of their life, even though they have an issue. So, um, especially something like asthma, like that, that can be well controlled in most instances. Um, we need to teach them how to be able to live life to the fullest while avoiding their triggers and maintaining their medications and, and show them that this diagnosis is not a death sentence. It's more, more just a mere inconvenience than anything. Um, so that's why I chose those is because starting the mental transition to, Hey, this is, this doesn't define me as a kid. I think that's one of the most important things we can do. Um, thank you very much. Sorry. Talk so on.